right. Hello. There we are. Good evening, everyone. I'm Professor McCoy. Welcome back for what might be the last time for this game in particular to The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Um, that doesn't mean we're done with the Zelda, of course, after this. We might be done tonight with Ocarina. However. Uh, however. Uh, there still is, uh, there still, of course, is Majora's Mask coming up next. Coming up very soon. Um, looks like I'm not going to get the rest of that. Uh, I need to go to a Great Fairy Fountain to pick up some fairies. Uh, oh, and I need some, I need arrows too. All right, so we're, we're going to do some running around a little bit um, before... It's time. Uh, before it is time to... Uh, before it is time to do the boss rush. And go through uh, Gen's castle. Because it does, like I said, it does look like we are going to finish this tonight. Looks like we're going to finish this tonight. Uh, now you'll also have to forgive me, I'm a little bit sore of throat. Um, so... Well, fine. Wow, all right, I'm not great at this. Wait, can I just run along one side? Nope, I can't. Okay, Jesus. Fine. Really? Well, that worked. It's down here, right? Yeah, I think this is it. Yeah, it's perfect. First of all, I need one to recover. Okay. I need more arrows, and I need more magic. Especially because both of those are crucially important for the sort of final boss rush. So, the uh, final dungeon. Uh, both arrows and magic are absolutely critically important, so I'm going to need to get both of those. Because the whole light arrows thing, you know? Uh, that means... Uh, where can I buy arrows? I can buy arrows in Kakariko. That's where I will go. Nocturne of Shadow. There we go. Mm. Tasty. So I've got a, um, I've got a bit of an odd d drink combination tonight, because like I said, I am working on a little bit of a coffee with the sore throat. Uh, the whole family is a little bit, a uh, little bit under the weather. Uh, been so for the last couple of days, so I'm no exception. Um, I don't have it the worst, thankfully. Um, unfortunately, uh, little Michael's definitely, not definitely, but he's probably got it the worst. Uh, he's been, he's been all sniffly and stuffly and is all sad, so. There we go. But I do have, um, I do have a nice Earl Grey tea. Which is nice and pleasant. Hmm. Good stuff. And um, and I made a Bailey's milkshake. So go so far so good. Hmm. Yeah, it's that's the thing. It's hard to get the balance right uh, for making things with Bailey's. Uh, and have it still, the flavors still come through, but not overpower. And I think I did it well. I think I did it right here. I'm pleased. House of school to love. I'm so happy everyone is back. Everyone. You're not, obviously. Thank you for saving my kids. 
What me? Oh, that's okay. You've already destroyed 55 spiders of the curse so far, so that's fine. Don't you worry about me. I assume there are more. Bam. I don't get anything new, do I? No. Anyway, yeah, I'm not supposed to worry about him. I know it's I know it's the completionist thing to do would be to worry about him, but I'm not doing that. Uh, where's the like general store? It's over there, right? I don't remember which one is like the, the like general store or whatever. This is just a house. Yeah, just a house. Alright. Potion shop. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. That'll work. That's it. I did not need that many. I could have gotten away with 30. Whatever. I'm full up. Full up is good. Let's go to the let's go to the castle. Let's go to the castle. All right. All right. So my um my recent video, which I'm actually quite pleased with. If you have not seen it yet, I I do absolutely highly recommend checking out uh, the first link in the description. Uh, my video on uh, on the storybook hero. Yes. We have to save Princess Zelda from her imprisonment in Ganon's castle. Yeah, I know. That's where I'm going. Let's break all the pots first while I chat. Um... But yeah, it's uh, it, I'm I'm actually quite proud of it. I'm happy with how it turned out. I'm uh, I got to talk about a really interesting topic, one that I've been wanting to talk about for for a good while. Uh, and that is a particular storytelling trope that I don't think gets enough attention, and I don't even think has a name. Uh, before I sort of supplied it, one the storybook hero. Uh, that being the heroic archetype of a hero who learns their heroism and is sort of prompted along their heroic, heroic journey, or hero's journey, I should say. Um, that's ominous. Uh, by the stories that they know. By storybooks. Right? Rather than uh, rather than, you know, the normal kind of inciting incident that we might otherwise think of. Giant bones. Mm. But yeah, I, I really like this trope, and I think I found I. Uh, ooh, hey, yeah. I pointed out a couple of what I think are really good examples of it. Uh, looking at uh, my major examples being um, the hobbits from the Lord of the Rings, uh, especially Samwise, and uh, as well as uh, Eddie Munson. From Stranger Things Season 4. Uh, particularly, <clears throat> I mean, also, really, all of the kids from uh, from Stranger Things 2 uh, throughout the previous seasons as well, but, but Eddie more than anybody else. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but he becomes quite the hero by the end. Um, there we go. Uh, but he does so through he learns about heroism and he takes his his sort of shining as his shining example uh both what it was i not close enough 
What's going on here? Oh, do I need to, like, pick it up and throw it or some nonsense like that? Huh? Oh, Michael was sad. Speaking of sick, Michael. Uh, what is going on here? I'm just gonna be trying things. Does something work? Oh, do I, I do need to grab it? Okay. Yeah, that's very silly. How is it that I can freaking grab this? I can't. Dot 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 question marks? Why can't I? Whatever. Okay, fine, whatever. I don't get it. I, I remember that is the way in. I just forget exactly how it's supposed to work. And I think you do grab it and throw it, it's just not letting me. Maybe I have to check this out first. Anyway, what what brought this up, what prompted this was uh was the thought that I just realized at least at least one version of Link. Um I'm thinking Um the Is it the Wind Waker version? Always grew up hearing stories from Grandma about the Hero of Time or something like that, and so that's kind of inspiration throughout the, throughout the story. Maybe. It's something like that. But, but there's a version of Link that fits within this trope, if I'm not mistaken. Link, can you hear me? It's Rauru, the Sage. We six will gather our power to create a bridge to the castle where Ganondorf dwells. The castle's keep, which is known as Ganon's Tower, is protected by six evil barriers. Bring down the six barriers and save Princess Zelda. Ooh. There we go. The Rainbow Bridge, formed by the power of magic, and this, uh, and this RPG I found to reference a uh, running gag. All right, here we go. Um, I'm not gonna bother with these bastards. I'm just gonna go around them. All right, the order doesn't much matter if I'm not mistaken. So I'm just gonna go counterclockwise, roughly speaking. No, that was... What do we have here? Oh, rupees. Okay, well, that's fine, I guess. Uh, hmm. It's gotta be... Like, Dense Fire will work here, right? Either that, or... Maybe I have to use an arrow. There we go. I'm pretty sure I could have just shot that one. Probably using a fire arrow. Hey, base. You're allowed to be late. You're allowed to be late. This is not class. And, uh, I mean, technically my students are allowed to be late too, but I don't, I don't penalize them. I prefer they weren't late, but they are allowed. What are... Oh, okay, that didn't work. Hmm, okay. I have to wait for the, the air to start blowing. Oh, hello. That didn't work at all. Hmm. Oh. I kind of hate the hover boots. Have I mentioned that? I've mentioned that. 
I'll be honest, I kind of like the idea that they have they can't have any treads on them or they won't work. I kind of do like that idea. But the application is really annoying. Hey, what did that do? Oh, hey. Okay, so I can go... Uh, uh, okay, well, it worked. Don't care. I got it. I opened the door. That's what matters. Oh, 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 oh. Too far. Okay. All right. Anyway, like I said, there is uh, there is at least one link that qualifies as the the storybook hero. That didn't help at all. Okay then. Is it light arrows? Or is it the master sword? Oops. Yep, there we go. That's what I thought. It pops like one of the aliens from uh, Majora's Mask. The forest barrier is dispelled. Hurry up, Link! Cool. I'm I'm very grateful to be teleported back. That's nice. Nice. That's that's very good. I'm glad for that. All right. It's time for the water barrier and for annoyance. Let's put on our blue clothes. We're wearing blue clothes. Oh. Really? That doesn't protect me? I totally thought it would. Okay. Oh, hey. Wow, that... There we go. Alright, well that worked. I spoke too soon. It's gonna do it too, isn't it? No, it's not. Okay, good. Oh yay, I got my health back. You... Ah, that's mean. You know, that's really mean. Wait, really? Really, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, it doesn't let you do that. Okay, can I use a regular arrow so I don't have to waste one of my fairies, my precious, precious fairies? No, I have to use a bottle. And to use a bottle, I need to use up a fairy. I'm displeased. And you know what? Fairies don't even restore your magic, so I wasted even that. All right, well, whatever. Moving on. Whatever. Whatever, man. Whatever. Oh, God, it's time to do. Okay. Uh, hmm. Uh, jeez. Okay. If I push it that way, yeah, that won't work. 
Oh, no. Okay, I know what I gotta do. Alright, I got this. Let me start over. Alright, I get it. That needs to go there. No, no, what the... Time is a factor, Link. Will you stop it? There we go. Okay. Great. Great. Oh, wait, shoot. I need the... Uh, I need blue fire for this. Hey, a fairy. I goofed it, though. I shouldn't have done that. This was really stupid of me. I, I screwed up at every level. Everything I just did, I screwed up. Alright, let's try this again, shall we? Alright, that fairy is meant to replace the one that you use to get the blue fire. So you need to use it, you need to do that after you already get the, the after you use the blue fire, which is after you do the block puzzle. Now I get it. Alright, I get it now. Um, but I'm just, once again, I'm a big dumb dummy. You know what? That's my bad. That's my bad. Man, I'll tell you what. I am, like I think most modern gamers are, I am rather rusty when it comes to puzzles that actually require thought. Uh, most of us in most modern games are just absolutely not used to that. Uh, most of us, when we, when we play modern games, like most modern games do not require even a modicum of critical thinking. Not at all. And I kind of miss it. I kind of miss this when there was almost no hand-holding, and the worst hand-holding there ever was was Navi talking to you. Oh, hey, um, is this... I need the hammer? Or the boots? I don't know, I'm gonna try the hammer. Yeah, it's the hammer. I don't know why that's in the water puzzle, but whatever. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, now I can catch it. It went through the wall. There it is. Okay, I got it. I caught a fairy in a bottle. Caught a fairy in a bottle. Perfect. Okay, very good. Very good. Now. Light arrows. Hello, fiancé. The water barrier is dispelled. Hurry up! Probably fine. Maybe I should drink it though. Um, I uh, that if you weren't here when I announced this previously, um, I I made a Bailey a Bailey's milkshake. With not technically Bailey's. That's uh. I forget what what uh, what brand name it is, but uh, it's. Uh, now, here is the other question. I can, of course, 
Fire arrow. This torch. Okay. Oh, well, hello. Are you kidding me? Uh... Here's one way of doing this. Here's the other way of doing this. Can I reach it? No. Does this require the mask of truth? Or the, not the mask, the lens of truth. It probably does. Let's see. Or I need to light that torch over there. That's the other possibility. Aha, this is awful. Okay, what did that do? Oh, a chest. All right, I can... Shot back to it. Cool. But he says, in relation to the ethics ethics test you mentioned in your video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually talked about it last week in... Ooh, gold comments. Oh, it's for the big things. Got it. All right. Um, if it makes you feel any better, my scenario wasn't the same, but the stakes were pretty... Uh, pretty still were pretty serious. Uh, my choice was exactly what you would have uh, would have wanted to see from your own students. Shame it wasn't an ethics class. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. That's... Yeah. It's one of those things where, you know, it's... I will say that I have... Whoops. Shoot. Um, I have perhaps unreasonably high expectations uh, for my students on, on some of these sorts of things. Um, and I think a lot of it is, like I said in the video, because I... I very consistently and really significantly and almost exclusively consume... Really? Why are you like this? Uh, consume fantasy literature of various sorts. Uh, most of that fantasy literature... Oh, frick! I could just... Yeah, hover boots. Yeah, I know. I know, I know, I know, I know. I can do it. I, know it. I missed. Really? I missed. Alright. What the heck? Alright. I'm gonna run out of magic. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Go over that way. Okay, cool. I think I can hover boots back. So I'm not wasting more magic. But yeah, like I said, I think that it's really it was a it was a cool test, like I said. But also at the same time, it's uh, it it is kind of unreasonable to, for me to expect what is essentially heroic courage uh, from you know, students, like you know, on a Thursday, on a Thursday before spring break, even you know. That's not when people are at their most, uh, their most carefully thoughtful and all that, you know? Okay. Um, what happens if I light this? I'm not gonna bother. Screw it. Now. Nah. I don't have the magic to waste. 
Still don't have the magic to waste. Uh, which, I mean, it's even more fun uh, today. Uh, today we talked about the Milgram experiments. Uh, and that's always a really fun topic. Uh, oh, it's just... Um, it's always a fun topic because it's... Uh, if I do my job well, Basically, I have to force all of these students to confront the very real possibility that they would do uh, that they would do terrible things uh, to innocent people for no good reason aside from. Oop. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know it's hot. Listen. Listen. Red clothes. Okay. Uh. All right. Oh, well, hello. Alright. Yeah, they... Uh, students basically need to, uh... Now be able to sort of confront... The possibility that they, or I mean, the reality that they would probably do horrible, heinous things uh, to to completely innocent people. Uh, like I said, for no good reason aside from because someone told them to. Somebody in an ostensible position of authority. It's someone like me. Um, so I told a couple of uh, a couple of instances of uh, of cases where this is this is a very real possibility. Um, First of all, uh, a silly example perhaps, but a good one nonetheless, uh, would be, for example, when I, um, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, god, 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 yeah, oh, come on! <sighs> okay, fine. I'm not going to make it, man. Uh, anyway, so yeah, the, the the very silly example would be um, when I... Uh, I shared the story of the time when I... Um, I really need focus. Uh, when, before class started, I basically just stood outside the classroom uh, with the door closed. And uh, when the door... When enough students got there, to the classroom door, um, I, I kept waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, uh, and they presumably, they all assumed that I was just waiting because I was waiting for someone to open the door for us. Of course, I knew already that the door was open, and so I was just sitting there, just standing outside the room, waiting until like 10 minutes after class started, and then I just, I just asked, hey, did anyone check if the door was open? With a bit of a shit-eating grin on my face, I opened the door, we walked in, and uh, we did class. Can I just jump it? Hey look, I can just jump it. That's... Oh, magic. Excellent. Yay! Alright. Well, that one falls fast. Hey, can I reach it? No, I have to do it from the falling, collapsing platform. Frick. Okay. I hate this. I hate this. <laughs> anyway, yes, it was a really funny situation. Um, made even funnier by the fact that this was not the first time I had done this. Uh, the first time I had done this was actually in high school, and I was not the teacher. I was the student, and the teacher was one of the people who I managed to trick into waiting outside the classroom until after class had started. 
Basically, I learned that this trick was possible because I tricked my teacher with it at one point in high school. Um, I just got to the classroom early at one point and just stood outside. And I told the first few people, lying, of course, because it was funny. Um, I told the first few people that uh, that the, uh, the door was locked. We just got to wait. And uh, no one said anything when our teacher came. Uh, actually, I think someone else told her that it was locked or something. And so she just waited with us for several minutes well into class time and eventually opened the door. She just got frustrated and just opened the door and we all went in. She looked at us like we were stupid, but I knew. I knew what had happened. <laughs> anyway, it was kind of spectacular. I'm very... I'm proud in a very silly way of that. Um, but that's, again, that, that really shows things like uh, crowd effects and how things like what we find in, uh, in the Milgram experiments, how that, can, how that can be possible. Because ordinarily, are you a thing? You're... Okay. No, that doesn't help. Okay. I need... bombs. Oh. There we go. Right. So, can I move this? Yeah, I can. He says I'd be proud too. Uh, are you... I'm not actually a Breaking Bad Better Call Saul fan. I've never gotten into either of them. Um, primarily because I'm... I'm... I'm not... I have... I find it difficult to get invested in... Uh, to quote Joss Whedon, which is, I guess, kind of shameful these days, I suppose, but he still made some good points. Uh, if there aren't spaceships, I get grumpy. I I really um, I have a very uh, very short attention span for uh, for shows or any kind of media that is this worldly um, that's you know that takes place in our world that isn't speculative fiction. And I no, but I can shoot it with an arrow, can't I? Yeah, I know I can freeze them, but why? I don't want to waste magic. I don't want to waste magic. I know they give me magic back, but... What? Are you serious? Oh, wait. Huh. No. Can I bomb chew? Oh, God. Coming back. Okay. Try that. Hell yeah! That's not how you're supposed to do that, but I don't care. At least I'm reasonably certain that's not how you're supposed to do it. But like I said, don't care. Wait, where did the... Where did the chest go? It spawned a chest. Oh, it was over there. Okay, that was silly. Does the chest give you bomb juice? I bet the chest gives you bomb juice. Yeah, it does. Ah, yeah, okay, never mind. That is how you're supposed to do it. All right, cool. Ah, that was silly. All right, whatever, I got it. Got it, we're good. Uh, I need fire arrows for that. Let's save while we're at it. Why not? Nope, that's not right. Okay, great. Wonderful. That's what I always wanted.
But I want more rupees for some reason. I'm gonna do that one too. There we go. Alright, cool. Base says I made the connection between them, uh, I presume you mean Better Call Saul and uh, Breaking Bad. Uh, them and Dostoevsky. Breaking Bad is Crime and Punishment, Better Call Saul is Brothers Karamasa. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. From what I know, I can see how that connection makes sense. Right? I don't know enough about them to, to you know speak to any like real like one to one serious comparisons. But thematically I can I can I can see what you're getting at. Because Walter White is uh, is you know self admittedly um, criminal. Right? He he knows what he's doing is wrong and he has to. He has to deal with that and the guilt involved, and so there, I, I can see a lot of parallel, parallels with *Crime and Punishment*. *Better Call Saul*, I know I know less about the actual plot. I know the memes and the theme song. Uh, theme song is a bop, as the kids say. Um, but yeah, I know less about the uh, I, I know less about the actual plot, uh, the plot developments. So I'm in, that's interesting that you connected to Brothers Karamazov. I would not have thought that, but I don't know. You're probably right. I assume. Talked about. Fascinating possibility, I'm sure. This is absurd. <laughs> That's the same sound that a that a piece of wood makes when it falls to the ground. They really had limited sound effects, didn't they? I'm gonna go back outside and mess with that giant that other giant pillar that was right outside. Let me see what that's about. Oh man, you can see where they were they were running low on polygons for this dungeon. There are like big creases in the floor. Now that though, that's some really good sound design. The laser sound, that's just mm, oof, oh, it's good. It's a good laser. I love me a good laser sound. And that's a good one. I don't remember what you what this is for. I, don't know. I think it might just be another fairy fountain. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it's this. I think it's the same fairy fountain. An interesting location. Yeah. Oh no, it's the great fairy fountain. No, you're fine. You're there's not the chat is not all that populous. You're not colonizing. You're fine. You're good. Oh, that's right. It's not. It, I mean, double health. You take half damage. Functionally, it's double health. I'm going to enhance your defensive power. Receive it now. I'm sorry for talking about that. I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I shouldn't make those noises. Yeah. Oof, look at those white outlines. Nice. I'm glad I went back and did that. Your defensive power has been enhanced. Damage inflicted by enemies will be reduced by half. Not by environmental factors, not necessarily. When battle has made you weary, please come back to see me. See, that's why it isn't technically double health. Technically. Um, because if I fall in the frickin' lava, it's still lava. It's still a heart. <sighs> and you know how I am about falling in the lava. Alright, let's go. You know, that's actually another thing that I, I, I hadn't thought of. I'm playing this game 
knowing how to play it. Right, I know what I'm doing here. Um, I know how to play, I know the mechanics, I know the plot. Uh, I basically know. I know what's going on here. Um, but, I know also that the first time I played this, I did not. The second time I played this, I didn't really. <clears throat> um, I did, but I didn't remember all that well. I'm gonna save real quick. Um, just in case something happens, you know. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's... Oh, jeez. Alright. Oh, interesting. Any more? Yeah, that's it. <coughs> uh, excuse me. A key. Now, I'm going to open these, but I'm going to regret every single one. Yep, okay. Alright, well this environmental factor at least doesn't doesn't still do normal damage. That's nice. A heart. I got my heart back. Yay. This isn't worth it. I'm not gonna bother with the other three. That's stupid. Okay. But yeah, um gosh. Anyway, I would have, um, I'm absolutely certain that playing this the first time through, without any kind of preconceptions or uh, foreknowledge or whatever. Oh, interesting. Ah. Oh, come on, really? What the heck is this? Frick. This is great. do this. What? I can't do this. Where's the other one? What? Oh, there it is. Okay, there we go. There we go. Alright, we made it. What? Um, I'm just gonna go. He says, these are my heroic stories. I grew up on Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and the DCAU. I didn't read anything. I didn't uh, I didn't have to until college. Oh, man. So, I did some reading. I did a good bit of reading. Um, growing up, <clears throat> I was uh, I was really big into the Animorph series. Do you remember those at all? I assume not. Uh, but if anybody does, uh, they were really good. Uh, they're basically about, about a bunch of kids who get... Uh, this pseudo magic technological technological power from uh, from an alien cube to transform into animals, and they get caught up in this uh, in this like cosmic war, a cosmic space war uh, between these competing races. One being the uh, the Yerks, which are basically the Gwauld, uh from Stargate, 
<coughs> and uh, the other, the Alandites? Andalites. Andalites or Alandites? I forget what. Um, who are basically horse people with, uh, with like, slashy tails. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. Uh... So they get this, they get this, this cool technology, and they start doing this war stuff. And they are their their kid, their uh, their kid heroes, which is really neat, cool like children's literature kind of thing. It was good. Adam, Adam, yes, Animorphs was absolutely nuts. Loved it though. Loved it. Hey. Will you. Ooh, that was close. There we go. We get the oh man, we get the organ music going. Oh yes. Aslan singing Narnia into creation brought tears to my eyes. The nineteen-year-old man. Yeah, that's. I. This is a maybe unpopular take. But the Magician's Nephew is my favorite of the Narnia books. Um, if only because I'm really a sucker for creation stories. That doesn't work, okay. There we go. Alright, cool. Uh, but I was thinking of Animorphs as a kid. I read uh, I read and really enjoyed the Harry Potter books. I really, I really love the series. Um, I read the uh, Chronicles of Narnia, which uh, I think the whole series uh, in like middle and high school. Um, I, of course, I absolutely love The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. I read The Lord of the Rings uh, right before the movies came out. I was maybe a little too young for it, if I'm to be perfectly honest. I was, uh... God, I was, I was what? Not quite ten years old at the time? Oh, jeez. I never, I never really read Percy Jackson. I think I tried reading the first one, but I never got really into it. Like I said, I think I tried reading the first one, but never really got into it. Um, and then the big one, the big thing that I was always reading, uh, this was mostly high school onwards, <clears throat> um, was the Star Wars Expanded Universe. Um, I got into it originally with the with basically my recommended reading list. Um, uh, Trusa Pakura is a great starting point because it starts immediately after. Oops. Okay, that's that was that was that was rough. Only attack one at a time, please. Um. Oh, ow. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm fine. Okay. Alright, cool. Oh, really? The Disney Plus fate, uh, Percy Jackson is actually good? That's, uh... That's surprising. I might have to look it up. I might have to look into it, though. Oh, well, that's not good. Primer for Book of the Rings. Crafts of Pridium. Interesting. I don't know if I've even heard of it. I don't think I've heard of it. <clears throat> um, but yeah, like I said, I read I read The Lord of the Rings the first time when, like I said, I was I was probably ten, maybe not even quite ten years old. Uh, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And then I went and watched the movies. 
Um, I didn't watch them. I didn't watch. I didn't go and see it right when it came out, just because I, I, I uh, basically I had to finish the first book at least before I went to see the first movie, and so I almost missed the theatrical run, but I caught it. Almost missed it. It was very very close. Um, in part because, good lord, did that did that movie have a long theatrical run? Um, and then I read the the second and third ones before the second one came out, and I was at the time absolutely terrified of spiders. Uh, so I was watching the whole second movie, like gripping th my seat, waiting for the Shelob part. What's going on here? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, what? What's going on here? Uh huh. Okay, interesting. Okay, never mind. Do I have to play a song? Do I have to play a jaunty tune? Or no, I have to go through a door. I'm just very dumb. Got it. Really <clears throat> there we go. Adam says I need to re reload of the rings. Went over my head the first time I read them. Yeah, I just reread them uh, last summer. Give or take. Absolutely incredible. They still are... They are still my favorite book, probably. Um, but like I said, otherwise, uh, the, the the book series that I, I loved so much growing up in middle school, high school, college... More high school than middle school. I really only really started them late in middle school. Um, was the Star Wars Expanded Universe. The X-Wing series, uh, Rogue Squadron and Race Squadron books. Probably my favorite. <laughs> um... But at the time, I read Trees of Bakura, because it happens like right after Return of the Jedi, which is a great place to start. Jumped ahead of the X-Wing books, which are, like I said, absolutely amazing. They are such good, pulpy war sci-fi. They're all about the pilots. There's like two instances of Force users at all. Luke shows up for one scene, and then Corrin Horn is the main character of the first four, but he is also like not training as a Jedi at the time. So all of the Force stuff is 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 subtle. It's really cool. <clears throat> really, really cool. Highly recommend the series if you're looking to get into the Star Wars EU. Uh, I read the Thrawn trilogy. I read uh, the... Um, oh, shoot. What was it? Jedi Academy trilogy, uh, which <clears throat> um, doesn't hold up as much. The um, Dark... Uh, wait. What's it called? Black Fleet Crisis uh, New Rebellion series. I still haven't read the Corellian trilogy, which I should. Um, I, I still, have I? No, I don't think I've read the Throne Duology. I've only read all of the source books about it. <laughs> so I haven't actually read the Throne Duology still. I couldn't find an audiobook when I was just doing my recent reread. So, mm. and then I, like, fanatically read the New, New Jedi Order series, the Yuuzhan Vong War, and then everything that followed. Just, like, just fanatically. It's incredible. Absolutely amazing. Fantastic. Um... I only more recently, like just in the last year or so, got back to, <coughs> excuse me, because I've been doing a reread, I got back to the absolute best Star Wars book, or maybe even piece of Star Wars media ever written, which is Michael A. Sackle's I, Jedi, which is a retelling of the story of, uh, of the Jedi Academy trilogy from Corrin Horn's perspective, which is just so great. It's amazing. Oh yeah, Magic Treehouse. I read those when I was a kid, when I was little. <clears throat> yeah, and those were those were good. Those were a very good uh, kid series. Very much a kid series. That's one of those that doesn't like age up. I don't think. But, like some of them, the Harry Potter books, those do. Um, Narnia, those age up well. I love this. I love this. I love this so much. Charge a bigger attack occasionally, either charging a spin attack. Um, big run sword, just shoot them with a light arrow while he's charging it. Okay. Can I still use the. Because I probably should use the Master Sword. I'd kind of like to. It's thematic, if nothing else. I'm probably going to switch and use the Master Sword against Ganondorf. It's what one should do, you know? The Triforce parts are resonating. They are combining into one again. The two Triforce parts that I could not capture on that day seven years ago, I didn't expect they would be hidden within you two. 
And now, finally, all the Triforce parts have gathered here. Jake, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Of course I'm playing. Observe. Of course I'm playing on an Xbox controller because I'm emulating it, but still. <laughs> yes, hello, Jake. Well. Nice. These toys are too much for you. I love the cape moves. I love that. It's great. I command you to return them to me. No. Oh. Link, I can't help you. Because of the waves of darkness, I can't get close, so I can't, can't use it. You can't use all targeting. Z targeting or whatever. Oh, the, no, this is the original. This is basically an emulated version of the collector's, the GameCube collector's edition one. That has this. Uh, the original Legend of Zelda, Zelda 2, this one, and Majora's Mask. Um, which, it works just fine. This is basically a game you've been running it on. Which, I, I have that disc, like, in the other room. Um, but I but I can't, I don't have a capture card for a GameCube, or for a Wii or a Wii U, which I don't have on Switch. So. Mm. Um, anyway, I have purchased this game three whole times, so I think I'm alright. In terms of, uh, because I bought the original, I bought the, 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 um, Collector's Edition 1, and I also got the 3DS remake, which is probably, I think, in all ways better. Yay, you fight him as an adult. You fight him as an adult, not a kid. Oh, yeah, the Vicaron Sword does have more reach, doesn't it? That's, that's a point. Maybe I should use it. Um, oh, yeah, so, so, okay, this is actually a good point, Erica, good point, which is the canon win timeline. So the, there are three, so this is where the Zelda timeline splits into three branches. Uh, there is the adult kid, the adult, the kid, and the fall timelines. The adult timeline is the one where you win, and you stay as an adult, basically settle down with Malin. Uh, and that's the one that leads to Twilight Princess, where Ganon is actually defeated once and for all. Or at least, no, 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 is, is, is sealed away, not defeated once and all, sealed away uh, in the Sacred Realm of the Twilight Realm. There we go. Uh, the kid timeline is the one where he comes back and Link isn't there to stop him. And so um, the gods flood, the goddesses, sorry, flood, uh, flood Hyrule, and that leads to uh, Wind Waker. The, the fall timeline is the one where Ganon just wins. And that leads to uh, Link's Awakening. Uh, I think Link to the Past. A lot of the older games are in that timeline. Yeah, I, I think I have enough health yet. Yeah, I should have. Yeah, that is true. The tennis thing, the, it has more reach. So, yeah, I'll probably have I'm sorry, Link. Oh no. Navi can't get close. The Great King of Evil. Oh, interesting. Interesting! Ow! Really? Alright, well. There we go. Okay. Are you kidding me? My wife sometimes watches my game stream. Not, not always. Thank you, no thanks. I think I can too. I mean, current, current, uh, current outlook is bleak. Hey, listen. Hey. Yes, I do agree. Yeah, now I know what the lower room is for. Yeah, right? Tennis. I also enjoy tennis. Oh, okay, no, we can't hit him. Yeah, whatever. Oh, look, more of them are falling. Yay. I'm gonna stay in this corner. This corner is safe. I need light arrows in a minute. Oh, do I have to hit him with a light arrow when he's stunned? I do, don't I? Yeah. There we go.
Nope. Okay. Can I hit him with the sword after I knock him to the ground? I assume I can. Oh! Oh, jeez. That hurt. Okay, let's try this again, shall we? I'm not wasting magic, you know. <laughs> Come on. Miss! There we go. Alright. Oops. Oh, darn. Okay, fine. Whatever. Whatever. I'll do it. I can do this. Ah! Okay, alright. Shut up, loser. Mad because I got cool red clothes on. Oh, speaking of which, hold on, I need to change my clothes. I gotta be wearing green when I'm fighting Ganondorf. Okay. Very important. Ah! Okay, maybe that was bad luck. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Stop laughing at me, that's me! Oops, that's not good. All right, well, fine, whatever. Okay, well, there's nothing in any of these pots. I got everything. Got in the process. I find it ironic that the king of evil seems to be attacking with light. Yeah, that is actually a good point, isn't it? It's, uh... Oh, it's... I... Maybe I assume it's from the Triforce? Because he has the Triforce of Power. So it could be that. I mean, that kind of makes sense. Makes enough sense. More, more sense than... Yeah, he's attacking you with his own magic spells. Owie. Yeah, you would think his magic would be, like, you know, perfect, you know? Like in Smash Bros. Worth a try. Missed him. Bastard. Yeah, purple is evil magic. Yeah, of course, everyone knows that. But so is uh, so is some green magic. Some green magic is evil too. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually, you know what? That is fair. Um, yeah, base. That's actually a good point. I mean, Lucifer is the bringer of light, and I would not put it past Nintendo to draw in some Christian mythology and Christian symbolism into a Zelda game once again. The great evil king Ganondorf beaten by this kid! Oh, green. Pukies. Link! Alright, load-bearing boss time. I forget, do I have to run or do I just emerge at the bottom? I just... oh. Yeah, I just emerge. <clears throat> oh no, I do have to run. Okay. Yep. I forgot. That was this one where I had to run. Whoa. Whoa. Zelda. Yeah, this is, um, 
Ganondorf, pitiful man. This part that's coming up where I'm not going to be able to talk very much because I'm going to be focusing, um, where Ganondorf is a load-bearing boss, basically when his tower collapses as soon as he dies, or very shortly after he dies. Um, this, is a, this is a perfect example. This is an illustration I very often use, uh, which I actually did use. I'll put a link to the one I used it for um, when, I, when I've uh, taught about uh, Aquinas' Five Ways. Um, where uh, Ganondorf is ordered in an essential way to his castle. Uh, he, is, he is essentially causally responsible for the castle, such that when Ganondorf ceases to cause it to be by, you know, dying, uh, the thing collapses. It is being sustained, it is being actively sustained in being by its antecedent cause, which is Ganondorf. So yeah, there we go. Cool. It's a great example of a of a of an essential uh, causal series as opposed to a uh, the normal sort of accidental causal series. Without a strong righteous mind, he could not control the power of the gods. And uh oh, yeah, Dracula in Castlevania. Yep, yeah, that too. It's a really common gaming trope from this era. Link, listen to me. This tower will collapse soon. With his last breath, Ganondorf is trying to crush us in the ruins of the tower. We need to hurry and escape. Well, I mean, actually, yeah, apparently not. Yeah, well, God exists in existence. That's that's how Aquinas uses the distinction. So, in, in the five ways, at least. Um, so I guess in this case, not technically, he is using the last of his power to collapse it. But whatever, it's close enough. Mechanically, it works. Please follow me. Run, Zelda, run! Three minutes. Oh god, everything is lagging. Why is the game lagging? I'm pretty sure my computer can handle the N64. Yeah, I know there's a lot of polygons on screen, but seriously. What the? Zelda, you got this? I don't think it's you, but I'll keep that in mind. I'll keep that in mind, no thanks. Just in case it is. You never know. Uh, okay. Now what? Zelda, you wanna help? Help me? Are you kidding me? slower. I don't know, maybe. Hey, hey, Nomad, how you doing? I mean, yeah, no, fair enough. Ganon likes to play God. Yeah, good connection. I love how Zelda just sort of walks across. Is that why she floats in um, Smash Bros.? Or am I thinking of Peach? It's been a little while since I played these macros. I should... I should introduce Sersha to Smash Bros. So Super Smash Bros. She would freaking love it. Oh no, I scared her. It's okay, baby. I'm just doing something stupid. Come on. Why did that pause? Oh no. What's going on? Oh, Stalfos for me. Oh, I Got it. She shouldn't have to float. She, she had all that training. Yeah, she's chic. She absolutely can just, you know, jump. Maybe it's the dress. Maybe it's the dress. You know, it's a big, it's a big flowy dress. It makes it a little bit hard, harder to do acrobatics, I guess. I don't know, whatever. 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 I understand it. I don't have to like it. I, I get it. 
<laughs> I love that she gets scared though when you literally leap over her. I know I got hurt. Deal with it. It happens, you know? It happens. Uh, yeah, 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 I know. I'm, I'm injured. Deal with it. Stop gasping! You're making it worse! Oh, come on! Who put that there? What kind of jerk put that there? Imagine she had swords in there hiding. Somewhere as a last resort. Uh, or like, I don't know, shurikens or something. Sheik, Sheik strikes me as a throwing weapons kind of guy, you know? Or gal, whatever. Pretending to be guy. All right, big boss time. Forget exactly the mechanics for this, but should be fun there, guys. Yeah, oh yeah, we're definitely gonna finish tonight, aren't we? Sure. Oh yeah, sorry for the stirring noises. I mean, it's still on a floating island, so there's still obviously some magic going on there, but, you know, whatever. Still. Very cool. It's over. It's finally over. You think so, princess? Link, I'm sorry I couldn't help you in the battle before. Oh, no, sorry, that was Navi. I forgot to use my annoying voice, but whatever. I mean, yeah, maybe it wouldn't fall. I don't know. Yeah, it probably should, but whatever. Uh-oh. Is this where I use the mirror shield? We still got it. I'm the cutscene, I say I have the master sword. I drew my other blade. I also really love that there, there is no subtitle to Ganon. Um, unlike, unlike basically every other, not basically, literally every other boss. Every other boss has a subtitle. Ganon does not. There's no way he's going to hold me back again. This time we fight together. I don't know how you're gonna help, but I guess you will. Right, thank you. Can I switch to the bigger on sword? Is that a thing I can do? Yep, that's that's dumb. Ow, jeez, all right, that was, that was intense. I need hearts, not... 
I'm doing this the wrong way, but I don't care. Next phase! Oh yeah, no, it's, it is definitely magically floating there. Link, the Master Sword is here! Hurry up! Oh, roll between the legs? Oh yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. It's sorting time, Ganon! Whoops, wrong button. Ow, okay, well. I assume I can't block his swipes. Okay, maybe I do need arrows for this. I'm just going to use the big run sword again. Damn jet foot, you know? Please, please and thank you. Oh no, I don't need that. Oh, hey, I didn't die. How did I not die there? Ooh, fairies. There we go. His legs is very link. This is a very link maneuver. It also works really well. Do I actually need the Master Sword to deal damage to him? Am I not hurting him? Or am I just not hurting him enough? Oh, 
Okay. I figured. Okay, yeah, thanks, Base. Damn it. I mean, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, now that I think about it. Thanks, Zelda. I'm using my power to hold the evil king. Use your sword and deliver the final blow. Makes me think of Season 5 Samurai Jack. Yeah, um... It's been way too long since I remember all of Samurai Jack. I don't even know if I've seen the whole series. I only ever watched it on, like, uh, Tsunami or whatever. Yeah, badass. Oh, just needs to be the last one. Okay. Six sages now. Ancient creators of High Rule. Now open the sealed door and send the evil incarnation of darkness into the void of the evil realm. Yes, yeah, um, very, very similar to Ganondorf's death in Twilight Princess. The dab right in the head. Yeah, that was brutal. Oh, and then of course Zonk snaps his neck magically. That's even, that's even hardcore. That's even more hardcore. Although, although, one of the more brutal also is the Oog. Is the one from, uh... Wind Waker, where you just like sword plunge directly into his head and he turns to stone and everything floods. Oh man. Oh, he loses the sword. There's a stalemate for a while. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. You. Curse you, Zelda. Curse you, Sages. You gonna say it? You gonna say it? Curse you, Link. Someday when this seal is broken, Twilight Princess will happen. Oh, that is when I will exterminate your descendants. So yeah, that's when Twilight Princess will happen. <laughs> Legit. That's yeah. As long as the Triforce of Power is in my hand... Such a great game. So good. As best I understand it, the proper ending is the child ending. The, the, the one we see, at least. Isn't yeah, this is him sealing him away in not technically the Shadow Realm, but yes. Um, it is into the 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 sacred realm, which becomes the realm of evil, which becomes the realm of twilight. And the Twilight basically wind up being subservient to him, and then they become, uh, and then they show up in Twilight Princess. Basically, that's how they, that's more or less how it goes. Thank you, Link. Thanks to you, Ganondorf has been sealed inside the evil realm. Thus, peace will once again reign in this world for a time. All the tragedy that has befallen Hyrule was my doing. Yeah, no thanks, he's ven says he's vengeful. Oh, yeah, damn, he's vengeful. Of course he is. Um, he is, I mean... Skyward Sword explained all of this very well, that these three, that Zelda, Link, and Ganondorf, are always three incarnations of the the hero, the princess, and, uh, and the monster being Demise, the spirit of Demise. And I really like that. I really like that uh, that sort of history history echoes kind of thing. Um, oh yeah, Midna's vizier. I guess you, uh, Zant was. I guess he. I guess he was her vizier. I think that's what he calls himself, right? Pull an Abraham moment and be fruitful and multiply. Yeah, you can't kill all my descendants if I have thousands of them. I'll create an army. Of little Hylian babies. <laughs> Good strategy, no thanks. I dig it. I dig it. Begins with an A. Um, advisor? 
maybe? I think he calls himself Vizier, but maybe not. I was so young, I could not comprehend the consequences of trying to control the sacred realm. The sacred realm. I dragged you into it, too. Now it's time for me to make up for my mistakes. You must lay the Master Sword to rest and close the door of time. I love how she's like, go! Go! Recover your childhood! And then Link goes to wander into the Lost Woods and get stuck in Termina. Damn it, Zelda. <laughs> However, by doing this, the road between times will be closed. Link, give the ocarina to me. As a sage, I can return you to your original time with it. I still have Sarias, at least. It is weird that he leaves with the ocarina of time, but also as a kid. A little odd. When peace returns to Hyrule, it will be time for us to say goodbye. Now, go home, Link. Regain your lost time. Go get lost in the upside-down world. Home, where you're supposed to be. The way you're supposed to be. Thank you, Link. Goodbye. He says, getting back to inspiring stories, this is why I've grown to appreciate Jonathan Peugeot, Dirt Poor Robbins, the rest of the Orthodox creative sphere. Um, hope you enjoy the TPR songs. Yeah, yeah, I am thinking of doing something about that. I don't know if I... That's the thing. I don't know if I've got... I don't know if I've got enough either narrative or musical expertise to contribute anything useful. Um, I still, I still want to watch the the movie with the album because I listened to a bunch of I listened to their songs, but I still I still want to just watch through the their their movie with the album to it. I still need to do that, and I still I don't know I might I might see what I think I might see if I can contribute something. Thinking through the whole thing. Thinking through all that. Yeah, I generally, like I said, I really like, I generally really like prog rock. I gotta be in a mood for it. It's been a little while since I have been, but I, but I, but, but I think it's getting me back into it. It's getting me back into it. That is the music. No, it's for someone else. No, what do you mean? What do you mean? I will say, I think that Orthodox, uh, or at least our Eastern brothers more generally, probably make better creatives than we Westerners tend to. Uh, at least in the, at least now, right? In, in this moment in history, I think we do. I think they do. Um, that might be, that might not be universal, because man, there have been some phenomenal uh, Western authors, storytellers, musicians, etc. Obviously, uh, even within the sort of Catholic tradition, uh, and even within the Protestant tradition, if you want. Um, but I think that the East, because of their, I guess, more loosey goosey sentiment, uh, sentimental, mystical kind of sensibility, it's a great place to look for for meaningful stories that aren't very straightforward, aren't just simply straightforward. No, don't get me wrong. I love simply straightforward. I'm a very, I'm very Western in my sensibilities, my spirituality, and all that. It's very, very Western. I'm very intellectualist. I'm very Dominican in that sense. Um, but at the same time, I think that that the East is doing a really good job nowadays of that kind of thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She played the same song to send you back that you would use. 
I assume she's, you know, because she's a sage and it's her ocarina and she's a royal family or something. That I'm assuming that uh, that she has like more power over it or more precise power. It's a good question though, no thanks. That, that does make sense. Oh man, everyone's getting re everyone's reconciled. Everyone's hanging out together, dancing around the multicolored fires. Oh, that's so cool. I like this. I like this. Although I will say. This, while this is great, and that's deeply confusing right there, that, that's, that right there is deeply confusing, um, I still think that the, the ending of Majora's Mask is way, way better. Because it's exactly the same as what you see here, except it's the festival. It's the festival of time. It's that whole thing that you've been preparing the entire game and you finally see it sort of made manifest. Uh, how it was supposed to be, with everything going right, everything that you've put right over the course of the game. Oh, God, such a good ending, Majora's Mask is. This is nice, don't get me wrong, I like this. I like this a lot. But Majora's Mask is just, oh, oh yeah, that's right, they're friend and their daughter. Off to be sages. Protestantism is a desert right now. Impressed with Angel Studios now, though. Hopefully orthodoxy serves as creative kick in the butt for the other faith traditions in need. Yeah. Yeah, and I will say, we need it too. We Catholics, we need it. We need a little bit of creative inspiration. Because we got a little bit going on, but... And I will say, I'm I'm proud of the work I'm currently sort of working through and doing on... on, uh, on what I can do, at least, which is a D&D &D setting. <clears throat> at least a tabletop setting. It'll work for more or less any, any uh, generally any fantasy system. Uh, it's system agnostic, technically. <coughs> oh, excuse me. The campaign I'm writing for it is D&D &D specific. You could presumably run it on something else. You just need to convert some things. Um, But yeah, I am uh, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that because it is it is heavily influenced by uh, medieval Christendom and the the sort of uh, what C.S. Lewis calls uh, calls uh, the model of medieval of medieval Christendom uh, and the way that they understood the world and the way that they saw mythology and all that stuff. says the ending from uh, the Jordan Mass actually changes depending on how much you play. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm talking about the 100% one, which is what I'm shooting for. This game, I was not going for 100%. Uh, the Jordan Mask, I'm not going for like 100%, 100% either. Like, I'm not going for every, um, like every heart container or every heart piece exactly, but I am going for at least all of the masks and maybe a full bomber's notebook. Maybe a full bomber's notebook. Though there is a problem with the Bomber's Notebook thing that in, in the original version, which is this, is this is basically modeled on the original version, that the Bomber's Notebook is... It's, it's far less navigable, far less useful uh, than the 3DS remake version. The, re the remake version is just excellent. It's so much improved, the Bomber's Notebook is. But we'll do that next week. We'll, we'll check that out next week. So I'm not going to continue tonight. We, once we're done, we're done. Um, I'm going to wrap a little early. Oh. How did it get into widescreen? What happened? What happened? That's weird. Has, has my face been intruding on the screen this whole time? I didn't notice that. It's not supposed to be. Unless this just went widescreen for the ending. It says Richard Rowland designed a tabletop game on Kickstarter a while back. Never played it personally. I'm I'm see that's the thing. I am fine with Dungeons and Dragons for for my side for my fantasy at least. <clears throat> um, I'm also running a Star Wars tabletop using the the Fantasy Flight Games Star Wars uh, Edge of the Empire system, which is really cool. I like it. It has weird proprietary dice sets, but it it does a good job with them. 
And it's a relatively open-ended system, so it allows you to 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 use uh, to use your abilities and also to to sort of narrate the um, what what's going on in really creative ways, depending on how the dice work. Uh, I think it is a pretty good system. Um, but I will say, like for fantasy, I'm perfectly fine with 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 um, with fifth edition D and D. Um, I for some things I might want to go back to three point five edition, um, but but the the level of system mastery that you need for it is is a little bit much for a lot of people. Um, and then also like like you need to know what you're doing. You can make a broken character, a, a character that just utterly fails to play really easily just by accident. Three point five. Um, but then also, uh, the, 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 the experience treadmill or the level treadmill, I, 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 going back to that sucks, uh, compared to, compared to the current, uh, the current sort of bounded, bounded accuracy ish thing that 5e has going on. Anyway, that's some game design thoughts. Anyway, I, like I said, I, um, love this game. I will say, I think I like Majora's Mask a little better. I think. But we'll see. We'll see how I feel about it when playing it. Um, because I did. I absolutely love this game. And thank you all so much for, for joining me through this game. It was fantastic. It's always it's always a great time whenever I get to do these live streams. Um, but especially when it's when it's a such a beloved game like this, a rightly beloved game like this. <clears throat> uh, I definitely enjoyed it. So thank you all for joining me so much. I hope you'll join me again next week. I'm going to be continuing on. Um, it might be Tuesday next week rather than Thursday. I'll keep you guys posted. I'll try and post early rather than late. Um, but we'll see what day it is, but it'll be, we'll be playing next week and we'll be starting Majora's Mask next week. Uh, and if my schedule opens up at any point, possibly over the summer, we'll see. Uh, I might go back to playing two games at once and I'll see if I'll pick something else up alongside. So we'll see. Anyway, that's all I have for tonight. If you haven't seen it yet, Check out my new video, uh, the the uh, the storybook hero video. Uh, I'm very thrilled about that one. I think it's a really cool topic, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys give it gives you guys some really neat thoughts. Um, with the context of Ocarina of Time, Midor's Mask is better. Yeah, I think that's probably right. I think that is probably right. It is. It might not be a better game, but it is absolutely a phenomenal, if not one of the best sequels ever. It's an incredible sequel. Um, in the in the way that in the way that. Uh, like Empire Strikes Back or Shrek 2 are incredible sequels. All right. So anyway, before I get too sidetracked, thank you so much for joining me. I had a wonderful time. I'll see you guys next week for Majora's Mask. Um, and until then, remember, don't be safe, be well. More importantly, be good. Good night, folks.